This lesson is going to tell you about the quotient rule, which again is for differentiation, and it's a rule that enables you to differentiate the quotient of two functions, i.e. Um, a fraction with a function on the top and a function on the bottom. Okay, and it links to um, exercise 9.5 within the year two textbook. Before we get onto that then, let's just have a, a quick little warm up reminding us about the product rule and this question also uses the chain rule within it as well so what i'd like you to do write the question down press pause on the video and then have a go at that it should take you about five minutes okay so hopefully you've had a go at that remember when we're doing the product rule what we want to do to show our working is we want to say what we put u equal okay and then we want what we want to put v equals and i'm going to write that as sine x to the half just to make my differentiation a bit easier so if u is x du dx is one remember that we're going to use that within our product rule v is sine x to the half a little bit more complicated because we're going to need to use the chain rule here okay so remember the chain rule this is going to be our function u to the half so we bring down the power we reduce the power by one so sine x to the minus a half. And then remember by the chain rule, you must do a time sign and then you times by du dx. And if I differentiate sine x, I get cos x. So quite a complicated thing, okay? But that is what our differential of v is. Right, let's state our product rule. It doesn't matter which way round you put the terms, but it's u dv dx plus v du dx you could have those the other way around it doesn't really matter remember this isn't given to you in the formula book so you do need to remember it it's quite easy to remember because you just keep one of the functions the same differentiate the other one so your u dv dx and then you switch it around the other way writing the product rule shows that you know the rule you're using so now because i've written these four things out at the top it's going to be nice and easy for me to pick out the bits i want so u okay times dv dx okay so dv dx is all of this thing so i'm going to write over to sine x to the minus a half cos x so that's my u dv dx plus v du dx sine x to the half times one, which I'm not going to bother right. Now let's see what the question is asking us about a maximum point. So what do we know about maximum point? Well, it's a stationary point. So we're going to be solving that equals zero for our stationary points. Now at the moment, it does look a little bit complicated. So maybe let's change these to the power half and minus a half. Let's just change them into square roots. Okay, so that first term is going to be x cos x. Okay, yep. Divided by, there's a 2 on the bottom. Now, if I write this sine x to the minus a half, remember that's 1 over the square root of sine x. Okay, so that is that term. Okay, so this bit simplifies to this. I've just written it like that so that I can see what I need to do to try and get the thing that I'm looking for. Plus, let's write that as the square root of sine x equals zero. Now, the question is to show that it wants it to look like this. Okay, so what I'd suggest at the moment, I've got these square roots of sine x's, which are really not very nice, okay? So if I multiply my equation through, okay to get rid of the fraction on the bottom let's times both terms by two root sine x you know when you're trying to sort of solve equations it's good to get rid of fractions so if i times that by two root sine x then i just get x cos x and if i times that by two root sine x i get two root sine x times root sine x is cos x is um sine x so it's the root of it times by itself. So I get that. What am I trying to get? Oh, look, it's got a tan x in it. OK, so to get a tan x, if I divide through by cos x, it is a show that. So let's show my steps nice and clearly. 
If I divide through by cos x, I get x plus 2 tan x equals 0. And that's going to be fine with the terms of the other way around, but I have shown what I want to there. So quite a complicated um, product rule there because of this square root of sine x. OK, but if you're manipulating those, we'll be doing some others a bit like that later. Just sort of write them as your square roots and then see if you can suss out what you need to do to make it look like the thing in your show that. OK. Right, so we're still on this um, section three of these objectives. We've done our chain rule, we've done our product rule, and we're now doing our quotient rule. And as I said to you, all of the rest of these, we will pick up again in September. OK, so we won't be doing those this academic year. OK, so let's have a look at what the quotient rule looks like. As I said, the quotient rule, so you write this down as your notes, enables us to differentiate the quotient of two functions. So that is one function divided by another function. OK, so this is kind of how I remember it. All right. If y is the function u over the function v, OK, then dy dx is v, du dx. Notice there's a minus sign here. So we must remember which functions we're putting where. OK, because unlike the product rule, order is going to matter for this because it's got a minus in the middle. So v du dx minus u dv dx all over v squared, OK? And u and v are going to be functions of x. So that's why I've got du dx dv dx. Now, this is given to you in the formula book, but let me show you what it looks like in the formula book. It's within a table of, on page six of differentiation. So the titles of the table are this is my function and this is what its derivative is, OK? So you can see it's very similar to what we've got there. But instead of U and V, they've got F and G. So they've got F over G. OK, now all of the working I'm going to be showing you, I tend to say U equals and V equals. All right. If you want to instead use the F equals G equals, that's fine. All right. But that's what I tend to use when I'm doing these questions. And like the questions in the product rule, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say what U equals I'm going to say what V equals and then I'm going to differentiate both of those and then I'm going to put them into my formula, which I'm going to state first. All right. So showing your working helps avoid mistakes. And also, if you do make a mistake, then make sure you get the maximum number of marks that you can for it. OK, so we've got a few examples to go through. So here's our example one. It's quite a straightforward one to start with. OK. So here is our function y, and we want to find dy dx, OK? So remember, u is going to be my function that's on the top. I don't write u of x equals, I just write u equals x, OK? If I differentiate that, I get 1. v is my function on the bottom, so I'm going to state what v is. And if I differentiate that, I get 2, OK? So let's state my quotient rule, dy dx equals v du dx minus u dv dx all over v squared. OK, so I've stated it and then I can pick out the things I need from my working up here at the top. All right, so v du dx. So v is 2x plus 5 du dx is 1, OK, minus. Now, do be careful with this. This, when you do u dv dx, I just get x times 2, which is 2x. If you get more terms there, make sure you pop a bracket around them. All over v squared, 2x plus 5, all squared. Now, do not expand out the denominator. It's tidier to leave it like that. You will need to simplify the numerator. You can see the x is cancelled, so I just end up with a 5. And leave the denominator factorised, because sometimes, you'll see in some of the later examples we're going to do, sometimes we factorise the top and things cancel out. So don't expand it out, just leave it like that. OK, first one done. Next one. Nice, right, a little bit more complicated here. OK. And can you see what the question says? Find dy dx in its simplest form. So you'll see once we've done our quotient rule, it ends up in a bit of a mess. All right. So this 
in this question, the examiner is specifically saying you have to sort it out. Sometimes they'll say it in the form of a show that, show that it's equal to something like this. If it says in its simplest form, they expect you to tidy things together. OK, if you are just differentiating and then maybe finding the value of the gradient at a point, then you can just differentiate and you can just plug values in. You don't need to simplify it. But for this one, because it specifically says you do need to simplify it. OK, right. Let's do our working then. So u is equal to the top, which is 3x. OK, du dx is equal to 3. Now, what's v? v is equal to 2x plus 1 to the half. So again, OK, you can see with this, I'm going to be using my chain rule. Remember, what's in the bracket is like my u. So it's a bracket raised to the power half. Do you remember how to do this? Bring down the power. Reduce the power by one. And then by the chain rule, time sign times by the differential of what's in the bracket. So we get this extra two, OK, because I've brought down the power. I've reduced the power by one and I've times by the differential of what's in the bracket. Let's just tidy that. OK, half and the two cancel. That to the power minus a half is the same as one over the square root of two X plus one. OK, right. Let's quote our quotient rule again. V du dx, it's always V first, minus U dv dx. And it's always over V squared on the bottom. OK, let's pop in the bits that we worked out in the first part of the question. So V du dx, I get three times. I'm going to write V as root 2x plus 1. OK, so V du dx minus U dv dx. So that's going to be 3x times 1 over 2x plus 1 all over so just sub in at the moment and we'll tidy in a minute all over v squared what's v v is the square root of 2x plus 1 so when i square it i get just 2x plus 1. okay right now this here this would not be an acceptable answer because it has a fraction within a fraction and examiners do not like those like I said, if you were just evaluate, if they said find the value of the gradient when x is 1, you can just plug in here. That's fine. They want you to simplify that. OK, so what you need to do is you need to put the whole of the numerator over a common denominator. OK, so I'm sorting out the numerator. I'm putting it all over a common denominator. Now, this term here is not over that denominator. So to put it over that denominator, I must times it by that denominator. So this is where your fraction work needs to be good. So I get three times that minus this is already over that denominator, so I don't need to change it. OK, you're happy with that. Now, when I end up in this situation with the numerator with the denominator and then an extra denominator, what I do is I combine the two denominators by timesing them together. Now, they are both the power of 2x plus 1. This one here is a power 1. This one here is the power half. So when I times them together, I add the power to get 3 over 2. OK, what have I got in my numerator at the top? I've got 3 times 2x plus 1 minus 3x. So what do I end up with? 6x minus 3x, which is 3x. OK, and 3 times 1 is 3. So that would be in its simplest form. So you can see what I've done. I've not left it with fractions within fractions. I've combined it all together and tidied it up. So that is what they mean in this in its simplest form. And for the questions you're going to be doing from the exercise in the book, they expect you to do this. OK, and you have a look when you look at the answers in the back, you'll notice that they look like this rather than um, left as um, an unsimplified form. OK, right. Another example looks very similar, but this example highlights something to you. 
so it's important for you to remember. Okay, so I'm going to do my working as usual. U equals 5x, du dx equals 5. V is equal to 3x minus 1 squared. Again, can you see within my quotient rule, I'm using the chain rule. That is why it's so important that you are very good at the chain rule. With the chain rule, remember, the thing you're thinking of as you is your thing in the bracket. So what do you want to do? Bring down the power, reduce the power by one. Nice big time sign. What do I times by? I times by du dx and du dx is three. So all together, I get six times three x minus one. OK, happy with that? Right. Let's quote my quotient rule again. Remember, it starts with a V. V du dx minus u dv dx all over V squared. You'll know it by heart by the time you've done all these questions. Plug in the things we've got because we've got them written out. That's quite nice. V du dx. So that's five times three x minus one squared minus u dv dx is going to be 30 x times 3x minus 1. And what's it all over? It's all over v squared. So that's 3x minus 1 squared squared, which is 3x minus 1 to the full. Now, again, this needs to be simplified. But before you start expanding out the top there and trying to refactorize it, OK, let's be smart about it. The top can be factorized. Those terms have some common factors. So do not expand them out. Look for the common factors. OK, what's common between them? First of all, there's a five. Secondly, what's common between them? Three X minus one. OK, open a nice big bracket. What do I times this? What do I times this by? to get this term, what's the answer? Another 3x minus 1 minus. What do I times this by to get this term? Well, I need a 6, OK, to get the 30, and I'm missing an x, OK? So you need to be good at factorising as well. Let's write your denominator in. Now, you should see now why Keeping it factorised like this enables it to simplify. On the top, I have a factor of 3x minus 1. On the bottom, I have a factor of 3x minus 1. So I can cancel the top with one of the ones on the bottom. OK, happy with that? Yeah. So what do I get all together then? Um, V du dx, I'm just double checking this. So v, v du dx minus u dv dx, all over v squared. So I've taken out that, definitely I've taken out that. Right, so let's just tidy what we've got on the top. We've got a 3x, okay, minus a 6x, so I get a minus 3x. I've got a minus 1, okay, over. 3x minus 1 to the power 3. OK. Yeah, you happy with that? Now, the top, I would look to see if I could factorise and cancel down more. If I took out a factor of minus 1, I would end up with 3x plus 1. So I can't cancel 3x plus 1 with 3x minus 1. So actually, that one doesn't simplify anymore. OK. Good. Right. So make sure you're happy with that. Again, that's a little bit of simplifying going on there. Right. Onwards. Next one. Oh, nice functions coming up here. So a proper quotient of two separate functions. So let's do our working. U equals cos squared x. Do you remember how to differentiate that? Do you remember when we did the chain rule, we wrote it as cos x all squared. Do you remember that? Yeah, we're coming back to you. So bring down the power, reduce the power by one times by, this is like your U, the thing in the bracket, okay, 
times by du dx, so that gives me a minus sine x, okay? So you can see within a quotient, you might get something quite complicated. So I'll just tidy that, I get minus two sine x cos x, okay? Right, so let's do my v, v is ln x. Do you remember what ln x differentiates to? Hopefully, one over x. Okay, so let's write out my quotient rule again. dy dx is v du dx minus u, oh, annoying buzzy thing, minus u dv dx all over v squared. Okay, so let's pop those things in. v du dx, okay, so that's this thing here times by ln x, so I'm going to write it as minus 2 ln x sine x cos x, how lovely is that? That's your VDX, UDX minus U dv dx, okay, minus U dv dx, so that's 1 over x times cos squared x, all over V squared, now, usually with lens, we don't write the little two above the lens, like with cos squared, we normally write it like that. Okay, that's almost your answer, but look at what we've got here again within our answer. We've got a fraction within a fraction, and examiners don't like that as your answer. Okay, so what you're going to need to do for this is to get rid of that on the top. So what you can do, because it's a 1 over x there, okay, you can pop the x on the bottom, like that, which means we don't have fractions within fractions. Now this term is going to be the same, but if I put an x on the bottom, what do I need to do to that one? You're quite right, I would need to times it by x. So it's minus 2x ln x, sine x, and cos x. Okay, sorry, that's a little bit squashed together there. All right, so when you've got ones with ln x's in and they produce these 1 over x's, again, you need to put them in the denominator, not leave them as fractions within fractions. It, you can, can, you can um, take, out a fraction, fra take out a factor of minus cos x if you want to, but I think that's reasonably simplified, that one. Okay, right, so what we've been doing so far then is just using the quotient rule um, to come up with the derivative. But now we're going to have applications of the quotient rule. So what are the applications of differentiating stationary points to start with? And then equations of tangents and normals. So we've just got two of those to do. All right. So here's my function y. OK, so what does u equal? Line x. So du dx is, that's right, cos x. What does v equal? e to the 2x. Got to be good at your differentiation. What does e to the 2x go to? Remember, e to something goes to e to the something because it's a 2x, though. So you get 2 e to the 2x. OK. Let's write out our quotient rule. v du dx minus u dv dx all over v squared. Okay, we can look at our working up at the top there. These are too difficult to do too much in your head. So v du dx e to the 2x cos x minus u dv dx 2 sin x e to the 2x all over v squared e to the 2x squared is e to the 2x times e to the 2x e to the 4x. Okay, stationary points derivative zero. Okay, so we're going to be solving that. The denominator will never be zero, so that's fine. So all we're doing is solving the numerator equals zero. So let's factorise out our e to the 2x, and then we get cos x minus 2 sin x in our bracket. Now you've got to remember with your exponential functions, do you remember what the graphs look like? They look like that. So e to the x, 2x is never equal to zero. So I'm just going to put a little cross through it and say it's never equal to zero. So all I'm solving is the bit that's in the bracket. What am I solving? 2 sine x equals cos x. Well, that's the same as tan x equals a half. Just be careful when you've got those twos floating around that you don't end up with tan x equals 2 by accident. OK, how do I get my answer? Arctan. 
a half. Okay, so you do that in your calculator, you get 0 0.4636 dot 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 dot. Now, what's the question asking me for? Coordinates of P to three significant figures. Okay, so we've got the X coordinate of P. We also need the Y coordinate of P. How do I get that? Well, it's on my curve, so I'm going to sub it in here. Now, what you want to do is you want to leave this full value in your calculator, the 0.436, okay? And what you can do then, use the answer button on your calculator, type in a fraction, make sure you're in radians, obviously, type in a fraction, type in sign of answer, divided by e to the power two times the answer, okay? And if you type that in, you should get 0 0.1769 dot, dot, dot. Now, always, some of you fall foul on this and some of the questions you've handed in to me before, always look back at the required accuracy. Three significant figures. You have got to do three significant figures or they will knock a mark off. So X coordinate is that. Y coordinate is that. OK, always, always, always give it to three significant figures. OK, if I was being particular there, X is in radians, so I would put a little radians there. OK, right, lovely. One more. Well, and this one more is uh, an application of the differentiation, which is finding the equation of a tangent. Now, this isn't very clear, just so you can see it when you write it down. That is E to the power one third X. OK, it's a bit small. Right, let's do our quotient rule. So u equals e to the power third x. Differentiate. Remember, e to the power anything is the same thing, but times by the derivative of the power. OK, v, well, that's a bit easy. v is x, so dv dx is 1. OK, differentiate dy dx. As soon as you see equation of tangent or normal, differentiation starts with V, V du dx minus U dv dx all over V squared. So I just stated it and then I'm subbing in V du dx, that's x over 3e e to the third x minus, so that's V du dx minus U dv dx all over V squared which is x squared. OK, I'm not going to simplify it. What do I need to do now? I need to find the gradient at that point. So at that point, x is equal to 3. So dy dx is equal to, I'm going to sub in for 3. I get 3 over 3, e to the power 1, minus e to the power 1, all over 3 squared. What does that equal? Oh, 0. So what does that tell you then? Okay, gradient of zero, it's going to be a horizontal line. Okay, so we do a slightly different thing to our normal y minus y1, etc. Horizontal line, what does its equation look like? Its equation looks like y equals something. Okay, we know what the y value is always equal to. So my answer is y equals a third e. So a little bit different there because we worked out that our gradient was zero. But just don't worry. Think about what that means. That would be a horizontal line. Horizontal lines, remember, always have the equation y equals something. OK, it's now over to you. There's quite a few questions to do. Work through them carefully. OK, do the working like I did. U equals du dx equals v equals dv dx equals create quote the quotient rule and then sub in your values and make sure you read the question carefully what is it asking for and is it asking for a particular degree of accuracy okay lovely so over to you if you're not sure about any of these just go and replay the video and watch them again okay thank you